Okay, so you have this game that's played with these, what's called non-transitive dice. I encourage you to Google that, and uh, there's some really neat stuff online about that. And I'm going to make a, a grid. I'm going to try to make a grid. For each die combination that we need to investigate, now how many combinations are there? Well, um, it's a... Uh, 4 times 3 divided by 2. So there's 6 possible combinations, but we only need to investigate 3 of them for this exercise. Okay, so this is how you investigate a combination of dice. You put, you know, on one side, uh, horizontal, you pick uh, one die, and the vertical side, you pick another die, and then you investigate their, their values. So in this question, your opponent has grabbed the C die, and so you have to investigate C against A, C against B, and C against D, so you can figure out what your best bet is. So C gets um, the values 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 0, 0. And then if you pick die A, you get 6, 6, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay? And um, in this case, 6 has to win against 4. So this creates these... Um, vertical stripes of wins for player A in this grid. Why am I splitting it up into 36 possibilities? Well, this is just the easiest way to analyze this because you get equally likely outcomes, but they're also, you know, you could say, well, die D against A. You don't have to do that analysis. That's true, and if you do it a different way, I'll be happy with it, but it's just easier to explain this by being consistent this way. Okay, so now A has these wins, but now that, cab that the situation where A rolls a 6 is gone, so let's consider everything else. That if, if C rolls a 4, now C is going to win. So we get these horizontal stripes for C, saying that every time C went, rolls a 4, C is now going to win. Okay, 6s and 4s are now out of play, and the only things that can be rolled are 2s and 0s. If 2s and 0s are rolled, a is going to roll the 2, so A is going to win. So then we fill in this part of the grid with A winning. All right, so then you have uh, 16 for C and 20 for A. Let's count them up. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yep, that adds up to 36. We've got the total of 36, and A gets 20 of them. Okay, so we do the same analysis for uh, B against C and D against C. Um, okay, just to save time, let's look at D against C. Because D is all solid threes, I'm just going to not draw that grid. Um, and then I will just say, out of 36, um, out of 36, look at C. And each one of these faces represents six possibilities. So C is going to lose 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 losses for C, but f twice as many wins. 24 wins for C. So if we had um, created the grid, uh, so losses for C is wins for D. We're talking about wins wins for D. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, do do it out for B. B is, well, you could just say it's half of each situation, but let, let's not, let's not do it numerically. Let's just do the grid. It's, um, it's safer in any case to make a grid because you're less likely to mess up, although it's possible. I am quite capable of messing up even using a grid, but it makes it, it makes it easier to get the answer right. In fact, I just recorded this whole video and had to delete it because I messed up even though I was using a grid. So I will show you how to double check for errors when you're done with this process. Okay, A against B. So A is 6, 6, 2, 2, 2, 2, and B is 5, 5, 5, 1, 1, 1. Now I want to see when A wins, because uh, 6 is the highest value. So every time that highest value is rolled, 
the person who rolls it will win. So we go ahead and fill in those wins. What's left is five, one, and two. Okay, so five is the next highest roll. And let's see, when it is rolled, it grabs all these wins. Two is the next highest roll. When it is rolled, it's an A roll, and A wins the following values. This is great for showing all your work and avoiding making mistakes and all sorts of other good things. Okay, so B wins, B gets 12 wins, and A gets the rest, right? 24 wins. Let's count that. There's 12 here and 12 here, so that's 24. All right, so the question was, which one should you roll? You want, um, why did I do A against B? I have no idea. Did I really do A against B? I did, and I'm not going to record it again, because I've already recorded it again, and I've already, yeah, I'm just going to redo this. You know, you may as well know that sometimes you just have to do stuff over. All right, so C is going to be against B, not A. Yes, and now we can have this pedagogical debate over whether I should uh, delete this video and just let you see me doing it perfectly. Well, too bad. You're going to have to put up with it. But then there's the argument that students should see you make mistakes because then they should understand that it's part of being human and it's part of the process. My students are pretty well aware that it's part of the process. Okay. Um, all right, so now we actually have B against C, and I believe it's correct. We have 4, 0 for C, and 3, 3 for B. Okay, 3 fives and 3 ones. Okay, now who's going to win? 5 has the highest value, so these are all Bs. This whole block is Bs. So all the fives win. Next highest value is fours, and it's taken by C. So these guys win. Next highest value is one, and it's taken by B. So these guys win. Okay, great. And C, C gets 12 wins, and B gets 24. Okay, now the question is, your opponent has grabbed the C die. You want to be the person who's not C, and so you want to be getting the highest non-C value. So you want the 20 for A. As Well, yes you do, because otherwise you'd get 12 wins for D. Um, ah, but here B gets 24, so that wins out over A. So you can then say, okay... If I pick A or B or D, I win. If I pick A over C, I win 20 over 36. If I pick B, I win 24 over 36. And if I pick D, I win 12 over 36, and this is my best bet. There we go. It's kind of squishy. Again, this happens because I'm writing on this screen. So um, hopefully this will be useful. Sorry for the mess up, but too bad. You're going to mess up too. We all mess up. And at this point in the process, after you finish the question, you need to go back and check so that you don't make mistakes like I did. So, for example, let's read again. You know what the game is. Whoever has the higher number of dots wins. Your opponent has grabbed the C die. So you have to go C against A. B against A. B against C against A. C against B. And C against D. 
which is what we did. And so we're double checking. This one wasn't a grid, so let's double check it. Each of these squares is, uh, yep, somebody's at my door. So I'm going to stop this video. Have fun.